The Army Field Band Soldiers Corps is performing at this year's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month observance. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. More on the observance in a moment. Also this week, a look at the Employment Readiness Program and three soldiers assigned to Fort Meade in 1966 make a wish of a lifetime. These stories and much more, but first, an important bit of traffic and commuter news. Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 9 a.m., all three lanes at the MAPES 175 gate are now open. Officials hope this will alleviate some congestion at a peak time. Outside of that peak time, you may find a reduced number of lanes. In other news, May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This year's observance held at Club Meade was hosted by the U.S. Army Field Band, the 70th ISR Wing, and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office. This year's guest speaker, the Dis Agency and Command Chaplain, was Colonel Suk Kim. An immigrant from South Korea, he shared his story and treated the audience to some inspirational words. So always remember, every day presents an opportunity. We cannot simply overlook today and hope for a better tomorrow. Reflection on my own journey, I realized that each pivotal moment has shaped my present reality. If I hadn't made the decision to come to the U.S., I wouldn't be here where I am today. In other news, May is also Military Spouse Appreciation Month. Earlier in May, the Fleet and Family Support Center and Army Community Service, among others, held a Military Spouse Job Fair and Appreciation event. This week, the ACS Employment Readiness Program hosted a new Military Spouse Employment Day. We took the opportunity to take a closer look at the Employment Readiness Program. Because we recognize that spouses have an employment challenge as they move from location to location with their uh, military service member. And it's a problem because in many cases the uh, skill set may not be transferable, that may be a license issue, that may be a change in that, that readiness status. All of those things can make uh, uh, employment a challenge for spouses. As a matter of fact, it is a key interest area from Congress, from DOD, from Army, uh, uh, material command right down to Fort Meade Garrison. Program manager Denise Hughes says no matter what your situation is, the Employment Readiness Program can provide support. If you are a military spouse, perhaps that have transitioned here uh, from a good paying job in support of your active duty spouse and finding yourself just kind of starting again, or if you're a spouse where your children are grown, and or older and you are finding yourself having to enter back into that workforce for the first time or maybe in a long time or if you're maybe wanting to start your home-based business and you're needing support and encouragement in doing that. Don't worry if you missed this week's event call the Employment Readiness Program office at 301-677-6658 or 677-5590. In more job search news, the Post Chapel is looking to fill a full slate of contract positions. They include a minister of music, choir director, and several musicians. They're also looking for community and parish coordinators. The chapel says these are non-appropriated funds, non-personal services contracts, and are subject to availability of non-appropriated funds. The contract period runs from October 1st of this year to September 31st, 2024. The offer period closes on July 7th. Meanwhile, as we said at the beginning of the show, Fort Meade welcomed back three soldiers this week, friends that were assigned here in 1966 before being deployed to Southeast Asia. The reunion came about through the Wish of a Lifetime program. Wish of a Lifetime is an affiliate of the AARP. The three have maintained their friendship over the years, but it's the first time they've been back together at Fort Meade since 1966. Going back to, to Washington, D.C. and Fort Meade where we where we first formed our unit. Our unit was formed at Fort Meade uh, okay. uh, during the Vietnam conflict. And that was 1966. And uh, so we applied for, we all applied for that individually. And uh, they accepted, they accepted our applications and took us and br brought us back here to Fort Meade. You can hear more from Paul Lang, Thomas Fisher, and Kenneth Hulsman and their wish of a lifetime on an upcoming episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. And that's Meade Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade Week.